to work as a team. Um, I have a quote here that this teamwork is the ability to work toward to, together toward a common vision. Being a good team player is an essential skill, especially at work and school. When you're working with a team, make sure every voice is heard and work together toward common goals. Additionally, create compromise to resolve conflicts that arise. Don't worry if you struggle with teamwork. You can improve your skill as a team player. It's also possible to prove you can work independently while working on a team. So I have a thing here, this is to team together, everyone achieves more. So section one, developing good teamwork skills. One, show you're reliable by doing everything you say you will. Your actions will reflect on everyone in your group. So do your best to always follow through. Complete your portion of the workload and speak up as soon as you notice any issues that may arise. Always keep your promises to the group. If you do need to get back out of the if you do need to back out of a promise, take responsibility for it by telling your supervisor, client, or teacher that you had to withdraw from the pod project. After you notify your supervisor, client, or teacher, tell your team um, that you had to back out. Don't put your group in an awkward situation. Two, make sure you do an equal share of the work. No one likes a team for the mate who barely contributes to the project. Take on an equal part of the work and speak up if you realize you aren't doing your fair share. Not only will your group mates appreciate your work ethic, it will show your supervisor or instructors that you're a good team player. Keep in mind that some tasks may be harder than others. Make sure you and your teammates create a balanced workplace load that's fair to everyone. If you feel like you are doing too much work, tell your team. You might say, I noticed that our team assignments are a little bit imbalanced. I have extra work assigned to me that I'm hoping we can spread around. If they still don't take on a, their fair share, talk to them one-on-one -on -one about their perspective on the project. Try to address their reasons for holding back. Then compare your current roles and invite them to take a more active role in the project. If nothing helps, you may be able to talk to your supervisor or instructor, but doing so can be risky. Make sure you've tried to solve the issue as a team first. Three, be direct and honest um, when you communicate with others. Always say what you mean, but use a professional tone. Similarly, don't waste people's time by padding the truth or being indirect about how you really feel. This includes what you say and what you write in reports, memos, emails, or text messages. On a similar note, don't gossip about or to your teammates. For share credit with your teammates, no one likes a credit hog, so don't steal the spotlight. Treat the team's accomplishment as a group success. Additionally, acknowledge the individual contributions made by your team. For instance, you might give your teammate credit for having a great idea that helped your, your team finish the project in half the time. Even if you're the team leader, it's important that you not hog the credit. A team success belongs to everyone. If someone really didn't help on the team, talk to them about team expectations and how they can contribute moving forward. You or your teammates may need to help manage their workload. If someone else tries to hog the credit, you have a few cho choices on how to handle the situation. In the moment, you could say, thanks for bringing that up, Sharon. We all worked hard these past few weeks to create this plan. If you can't speak up in the moment, confront your colleague calmly to discuss what happened. Ask them to explain why they indicated that they deserved all the credit. So this doesn't, if this doesn't help, you may need to involve your supervisor to make sure you keep records that show who did what as part of the team. And then finally, um, adopt a positive attitude when it comes to your work. People are more likely to enjoy working with you if you have a good attitude. You can improve your attitude by approaching problems as an opportunity, expecting a positive outcome, and adopting habits that improve your work day. One way to always find the positive outcome is to consider your work never complete until something good comes out of it. Good habits to help your work day go more smoothly. Might, in, um, might enjoying, include enjoying a mug of your favorite tea every afternoon organizing your desk to reduce your stress levels, and enjoying a brief, energizing walk at lunchtime.
is section two, working independently while on the team. So one, take initiative when working on your um, collaborations to the team. Although you're t working on a team, you'll likely complete some of the work alone. Don't expect your teammates to take responsibility for keeping you on track. Be a self-starter by staying on top of your assignments, creating deadlines for yourself, and meeting project expectations. This also shows your supervisor and teammates that you're able to work independently of them. To speak up when you have ideas or expertise about a topic, this shows leadership skills, while also making you a valuable part of the team. Sharing your thoughts shows that you have more to offer and are thinking outside the box. Even if your ideas aren't right for the project, they might lead to a future innovation of a different project. When you have team meetings, always contribute something to the discussion. If you have trouble thinking on the spot, brainstorm before the meeting so that you have some ideas about what you have to say. Three, volunteer to take on extra work when necessary. This is another way to show that you're not only a good team member, but also an independent worker. Step up to lead a project, knock out a backlog of unfinished tasks, or complete a side project for your supervisor. Then it complete the extra work as quickly as possible. You'll show your independence by setting priorities between each of your work tasks, creating new deadlines for yourself, and following through on your promises. When you take on these extra projects, you'll quickly gain a reputation for being a self-starter and an asset to the organization. Make sure that you don't take on too much work. You'll need to balance your new projects with your current work assignments. Know your schedule so you don't accidentally put too much on your plate. Okay, now we're on to section three, completing a team project. Um, one, pick team members who have skills that complement yours if you can. If you have a choice on who you'll work with, look for people who are different from you. Although it's tempting to pick similar people um, so your work will go smoothly, it's better to have a diverse ideas and skill set on your team as you'll be able to be more creative. If everyone has the exact same perspective and skill set, it will be harder to divide the work because everyone will want to do the same things. For instance, let's say you're working on a project to design a brochure. If everyone on your team enjoys graphic design, you'll all want to create the brochure instead of tasks like conducting research on your topic. Additionally, your group won't be as innovative in your ideas because you won't be coming at the topic from different perspectives. For example, team members from different socioeconomic backgrounds might have experienced a community issue in a different way, giving them a different perspective on it. Two, um, compare skill sets with your teammates if you are, our team is already chosen. Talk to your teammates to find out their backgrounds, strengths, weaknesses, and interests. Determine what you bring to you each bring to the table. Try to find ways you can complement each other's skills so your team can work well together. If you're a team leader, you might host a planning meeting and invite everyone to t share their skills. If you're not in a leadership position, talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. Look for ways that you can bring something new to the table. For example, let's say you find out your teammates are strong in skills like networking with clients, statistics, and design. Although you might also be strong in networking and design, you could offer to use your writing skills to complement the skills of your teammates. Three, include input from all team members so everyone is heard. A team can only thrive if everyone feels valued and heard. Not all ideas are winners, but the group must still listen to, you, to them and consider if they're good ideas for this project. Make it a priority to collaborate as much as possible. If team members start to feel as though their ideas don't matter, they'll stop being a, an active part of the team. This will all hurt your overall output as you're losing valuable ideas and expertise. For example, you might host roundtable meetings to encourage participation. If you feel like people on your team aren't listening to you, talk to your team lead about it. Say, at the past three meetings, I've tried to offer input on the project, but I keep getting interrupted. Do you think we can try a round table approach so we can also share our ideas? So for participate in goal setting as a team, so you have a plan. 
It's important that all team members are working on the same goals, rather than each person pursuing personal aspirations. Discuss your goals as a team and adopt the goals that everyone agrees on. Moving forward, you can change or, or adapt your goals as needed, as long as everyone provides input. Be as active in the goal setting process as possible. If your team leadership already set goals for your group, you might not get a voice in the process. For example, your team might start out with goal, three goals. Design a survey to gather public input about our park project. Two, distribute the surveys to the residents. Three, evaluate the survey results to determine how to proceed with phase two of our planning project. So five, clarify the team expectations so everyone is on the same page. This can include explaining the expectations or asking questions if you find them unclear. Um, so an example of this might be everyone completes their work on time, check team communication daily, upload all work to the communal folder. So some of these, I'm not going to read the whole paragraph thing I wrote. I'm just going to read because they seem, you know, but six, participate in brainstorming sessions to encourage collaboration. Um, for my own work with teamworks that are done for school, this has been a big part of it um, where it's failed is we haven't come together as a group to encourage collaboration. We all just took separate sections and didn't work together really. Um, establish a universal means of communicating with the team. So nowadays we have Zoom, which is used for a lot of things for facial meetings, but you also have Microsoft Teams where you can upload um, documents and work on them as a team. You've got OneDrive, so there's many of many options to doing this. And also you want to focus on the success of the group, not just your personal success. Um, so we can't really talk about team stuff without talking about team conflict because there's going to be conflict. So one of the things you're going to do is discuss the issue in person with your teammates. So taking things out of, in person will allow a free flow of information and prevent misunderstandings which might occur. Um, to direct the concern toward your problem, not the teammates. So when you come about something, see like, I feel and um, we're having a problem, for example, in communication. So instead of just saying, okay, this teammate isn't communicating well. Okay, I'm ha bring it to the whole group and say, we're having a problem with communication. How can we improve this? It also says give everyone a chance to share their opinion if you're the leader. Um, for instance, you might host a round table to allow everyone a chance to speak. Um, nowadays, since everyone's things been doing on Zoom, video talking, you know, um, let people, you know, post in the comments or raise their hand and be like, okay, I would like a turn. Um, so then that way you're not over talking each other. <laughs> Now, if there is a conflict, you also want to make sure that you listen to each side of the conflict. Because every team member might see it differently. You can finally use this conflict to generate new ideas whenever possible. Um, and then also create a compromise so that everyone feels included and that they can move forward working with the team successfully. So that's it for this video. Thanks for listening.